Casinos are required to develop and implement compliance policies and procedures to ensure that criminals are not entertained and possible money laundering and terrorist financing activities are avoided. Compliance policy and procedures are written methodologies and processes that outline the obligations of casinos under the applicable AML and KYC regulatory requirements, such as PCMLTFA and its associated regulations. Compliance policy and procedures outline the internal controls that are designed by casinos to ensure that applicable regulatory requirements are complied with. A compliance policy is approved by the Board of Directors and implemented through the Management and Chief Compliance Officer. The compliance policy and procedures of the casino must be written and should be in a form and format that is accessible to its intended audience, kept up to date, including changes to legislation or your internal processes, as well as any other changes that would require an update and approved by a senior officer of the entity. Different money laundering typologies are used by the money launderers or criminals to hide their illegal funds or use them to generate more money. These typologies serve as the indicators for the entities, which are assessed considering their potential financial impact and the likelihood of occurrence. These typologies are suggested to be used by various regulators in different jurisdictions, such as United States, Canada, Australia, Singapore, etc. Indicators of ML using casino value instruments. As per the Financial Action Task Force, here are some indicators of money laundering using casino value instruments. These risk indicators are assessed when performing the risk assessment for ML-TF. Inserting funds into gaming machines and immediately claiming those funds as credits. Customers claiming gaming machine credits and payouts with no jackpot. Customers claiming a high level of gaming machine payouts. Noticeable spending and or betting pattern changes. Customers frequently inserting substantial amounts in gaming machines that have high payouts percentages and do not play max bet to limit chances of significant losses or wins, thereby accumulating gaming credits with minimal play. Frequent even money wagering when conducted by a pair of bettors covering both sides of an even bet, e.g. in roulette, baccarat slash mini baccarat, or craps. A customer's intention to win is absent or secondary. Two or more customers frequently wagering against one another on even money games. Customer in possession of large amounts of coinage or bills. Customer befriending attempting to befriend casino employees. Purchasing and cashing out casino chips with little or no gaming activity. Customer requesting to add cash to casino winnings and then exchanging the combined cash and winnings for a single check. Use of third parties to purchase casino chips. Use of credit cards to purchase casino chips. Use of personal checks, bank checks and traveler's checks to purchase casino chips. Customer due diligence challenges, such as refusals, submission of false documents, one-offs, tourists passing trade. Multiple checks being requested or drawn on account. High volume of transactions within a short period. Multiple chip cash outs on the same day. Structuring of chip or check transactions. Chip cash out is same or similar to chip purchase. Requests for credit transfers to other casinos. Use of multiple names to conduct similar activities. Customer purchases chips and leaves casino shortly after the purchase. CPV, ticket, or voucher dated prior to date of redemption. Large chip purchases made. Frequent purchase of casino gift certificates. Unexplained income inconsistent with financial situation or customer profile. Dramatic or rapid increase in size and frequency of transactions for regular account holder. Detection of chips brought into the casino. Casino-specific ML slash TF risk indicators. In addition to the general ML and TF indicators, there may be more specific ML and TF indicators related to casino business. Here are some examples of sector-specific indicators that should be considered as part of your casino review process. 
any casino transaction of $3,000 or more when a person receives payment in casino checks made out to third parties or without a specified pay. Client requests a winnings check in a third party's name. Acquaintances that against each other in even money games and it appears that they are intentionally losing to one of the parties. Client attempts to avoid the filing of a report for cash by breaking up the transaction. Client requests checks that are not for gaming winnings. Client inquires about opening an account with a casino and the ability to transfer the funds to other locations when the client is not known as a regular, frequent, or large volume player. Client purchases large volume of chips with cash, participates in limited gambling activity with the intention of creating a perception of significant gambling, and then cashes the chips for a casino check. Client puts money into slot machines and claims accumulated credits as a jackpot win. Client exchanges small denomination banknotes for large denomination banknotes, chip purchase vouchers, or checks. Client is known to use multiple names. Client requests the transfer of winnings to the bank account of another party or a known drug source country or to a country where there is no effective anti-money laundering system. ML slash TF indicators related to identifying the person. The following are examples of ML slash TF indicators that a casino may observe when identifying persons. There is an inability to properly identify the client or there are questions surrounding the client's identity. When opening an account, the client refuses or tries to avoid providing the information required or provides information that is misleading, vague, or difficult to verify. The identification document presented by the client cannot be authenticated. There are inconsistencies in the identification documents or different identifiers provided by the client, such as name, address, date of birth, or phone number. Client produces seemingly false information or identification that appears to be counterfeited, altered, or inaccurate. Client displays a pattern of name variations from one transaction to another or uses aliases. Client alters the transaction after being asked for identity documents. The client provides only a non-civic address or disguises a post office box as a civic address for the purpose of concealing their physical address. Common identifiers, e.g. addresses, phone numbers, etc., are used by multiple clients that do not appear to be related. Transactions involve persons identified by the media, law enforcement, and slash or intelligence agencies as being linked to criminal activities. Attempts to verify the information provided by a new or prospective client are difficult. ML slash TF indicators related to client behavior. The contextual information acquired through the Know Your Client requirements or the behavior of a client, particularly surrounding a transaction or a pattern of transactions, may lead a casino to conduct an assessment in order to determine if the casino is required to submit an STR to a relevant regulatory body. The following are some examples of ML slash TF indicators that are linked to contextual behavior and may be used in conjunction with a casino's risk-based approach. Client makes statements about involvement in criminal activities. Client conducts transactions at different physical locations or approaches different staff. Evidence of untruthfulness on behalf of the client, e.g., providing false or misleading information. Client exhibits nervous behavior. The client refuses to provide information when required or is reluctant to provide information. Client has a defensive response to questioning. Client presents confusing details about the transaction or knows few details about its purpose. Client avoids contact with reporting entity employees. The client refuses to identify a source for funds or provides information that is false, misleading, or substantially incorrect. Client makes inquiries or statements indicating a desire to avoid reporting or tries to persuade the reporting entity not to file slash maintain required reports. Insufficient explanation for the source of funds. Client closes account after an initial deposit is made without a reasonable explanation.